The Man Who Solved the Market by Gregory Zuckerman tells the story of Jim Simons, a mathematician who changed finance with his firm, Renaissance Technologies. This book tracks his shift from academia to launching one of the most successful hedge funds ever. It highlights his use of mathematical models to predict market trends. The summary below outlines each chapter, showing how Simon's methods reshaped financial trading. Chapter 1. This chapter introduces us to Jim Simons as a teenager, working at a garden supply store, which serves as a backdrop for his early encounters with mathematics. The mundane nature of his job contrasts with his intellectual pursuits as he dreams of exploring mathematics further. Simons' personal background is detailed, including his family's influence on his ambitions and the development of his analytical mind that would later revolutionize financial markets. Chapter 2. Simons' academic journey begins at MIT, where his interest in patterns and data analysis starts to take shape. This chapter delves into his time at the Institute for Defense Analyses, where he applied his mathematical skills to crack codes for the NSA. The skills and methodologies he developed here focused on recognizing patterns and predicting outcomes, foreshadow his later success in developing algorithmic trading models. Chapter 3. We see Simon's transition from academia to experimenting with trading. His first attempts are rudimentary and based more on intuition than the complex algorithms he would later develop. This chapter explores his initial forays into the market, the early lessons he learned, and the beginning of his quest to find mathematical patterns in stock market data. Chapter 4. Simons founds Renaissance Technologies, and the firm begins to experiment with mathematical models for trading. This chapter details the initial challenges of aligning scientific methods with financial trading, including the recruitment of talented mathematicians and scientists and the skepticism they faced from the traditional financial industry. Chapter 5. The Medallion Fund starts to see significant success under Simons' leadership. This chapter focuses on the critical breakthroughs in data analysis and the refinement of algorithms that allowed Renaissance to capitalize on market inefficiencies. The chapter also explores the internal dynamics of Renaissance, including how the team managed the pressures and expectations that came with success. Chapter 6. As Renaissance cements its position in the financial world, this chapter examines the broader implications of its success. It discusses the industry's reaction to Renaissance's achievements and the firm's influence on the evolution of quantitative, model-driven trading strategies across Wall Street. Chapter 7. Simons faces personal and professional challenges during this period. The chapter captures his struggles with loss, the reassessment of his life and career, and how these personal elements influenced his professional decisions and the strategic direction of Renaissance technologies. Chapter 8. This chapter addresses the ethical and operational challenges that emerge as Renaissance grows. It explores conflicts within the firm, debates over the ethical implications of high-frequency trading, and how Simons and his team responded to external criticism and internal disagreements. Chapter 9. With Simons contemplating retirement, Renaissance prepares for a transition in leadership. This chapter discusses how the firm sought to preserve its edge through innovations in trading technology and strategy, and the challenges of maintaining its culture and success without its visionary leader. Chapter 10. The global financial crisis tests Renaissance's strategies like never before. This chapter analyzes how the firm navigated the tumultuous market conditions, adapting its models and strategies in response to unprecedented volatility and stress in financial markets. Chapter 11. Renaissance continued to evolve its trading strategies to maintain its competitive edge. This chapter details the ongoing innovations at the firm, the challenges of staying ahead in a rapidly changing technological landscape, and the continuous refinement of their algorithms. Chapter 12. Simon's broader impact on the fields of finance and mathematics is explored, including his philanthropic efforts which focus on scientific research and education. This chapter reflects on how his work has influenced not just trading, but also the academic and scientific communities. Chapter 13. As technology advances, this chapter discusses the implications for the finance industry and Renaissance's role in these developments. It explores the challenges of regulatory changes, the impact of new technologies on trading, and how Renaissance has remained at the forefront of these trends. Chapter 14. The book concludes by considering the future of trading and finance, sparked by the innovations that Simons helped pioneer. This chapter speculates on the ethical, technological, and financial challenges facing the industry and how future generations of traders and mathematicians might navigate them.